Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, my name is Lisa Geary, and I am the Product Manager of Dental Solutions here at Roland DGA DG Shape Americas. Here along with me today, I do have Mike Webb, um, President of Sim Systems. And Mike, before we get started today, why don't you tell us a little bit about Sim Systems? Sure. Well, uh, thank you, Lisa. And um, uh, it's a pleasure here to be uh, be with you guys on the announcement of the AK-1 kit. Uh, my name again, as Lisa mentioned, is Michael Webb, and um, I run the U.S. office uh, for Sim System. Now, uh, we are a CAM software developer based out of Milan, Italy, uh, but we've been in the dental industry for quite some time now, actually well over a decade in terms of uh, uh, being on the digital side and uh, working with uh, customers all throughout the world. Um, Roland is one of our closest partners in terms of uh, machine manufacturers, although we are an open CAM system, so we work with all different kinds of mills. Um, we really love the flexibility that the Roland mills afford uh, users and, and a lot of the niche features that you don't see uh, with other machines, which are, which are really nice. So um, we're looking forward to demoing the, the workflow of the new AK-1 kit for you guys today. Awesome. Well, we're happy to have you here with us today, Mike. Um, and again, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we're excited to provide an introduction to the newest product in the DG Shape Dental line, uh, which is gonna be the AK-1 or the abutment kit. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I do wanna add on a side note, um, we're gonna have a nice Q&A session at the end. So if you have any questions, I do ask that you hold them off to the end. Thank you. So what is the AK-1 abutment kit? The AK-1 abutment kit is an add-on accessory for our DWX 42W wet mill um, that enables for the milling and production of custom titanium abutments. It includes um, special purpose filters, um, filter tray, excuse me, and also titanium dedicated milling tools, which allows you to mill pre-mill titanium blanks with precision and ease. The kit itself, um, this is our AK-1, what we call the primary set or the kit itself. It comes with that special purpose filter tray, as I mentioned. It, there are three different sizes of titanium dedicated milling tools. Comes with this, um, our torque driver, some replacement filters, a hexagonal wrench, a user's manual, and then this neat little receptacle tray, which essentially is gonna be where you're gonna store the kit when it's not in use. In addition to that, in order to um, mill custom titanium abutments, you're going to need one of these manufacturer specific material attachment adapters. Um, currently, the kit is compatible with pre-mill titanium blanks from Geomedi, NT Trading, and also Medentica. The kit, as well as these uh, manufacturer specific attachment adapters, will be available exclusively through a Roland authorized dealer or via our online store at www.rolanddga.com forward slash dental. As far as consumables for the AK-1, it's pretty simple. You've got the titanium dedicated milling tools that we talked about. As a reminder, your first set of those is included with the kit itself. And then in addition to that, you will need to purchase pre-mill titanium blanks um, for one of those three manufacturers, again, Medentica, NT Trading, and Geomedi. And those can be purchased through an authorized reseller of those manufacturers of your choice. So how does the AK-1 work? It's actually pretty simple, to be honest with you. Um, you're going to go about life as you normally would for something like this. You're going to scan and design. Um, from there on, you're going to replace the receptacle tray here, the special filter tray. Um, after that, um, you're going to nest it into your CAM system. Um, then you're going to connect the AK-1 material attachment adapter, connect your pre-mill titanium blank, and then you're going to mill and complete. And at the end, you're going to have this great, beautiful, nice-looking custom titanium abutment. Now another question that we might have is, what current CAD CAM systems are supported with this kit? Currently for CAD software, it is supported by 3Shape, ExoCAD, and Dental Wings. As far as CAM software, it is compatible right now with Millbox by Sim Systems, which as a reminder is included with our DWX 42W wet mill. As far as implant system compatibilities, 
which manufacturer pre-milled blank you choose is gonna be entirely up to you. And a lot of times it's gonna be based on the CAD software you're using and or the implant system um, in which you know, the clinician or the lab is using. So this is just a general guideline of compatibilities. However, these manufacturers do update you know, these um, libraries regularly. So we did also include here their manufacturer websites and we would invite you to take a look at that if you're looking for more information on that. So what components are necessary to mill custom titanium abutments with the DWX 42W wet mill? Where you're gonna need your 42W, you're gonna need the AK1 primary set, you're gonna need one of our uh, manufacturer specific material adapter attachments, and then you're gonna need those pre-milled blanks. Here at the bottom, it's just giving you a general overview of how the machine with the kit enables you to take this nice pre-milled titanium blank and turn it into this nice finished product of a custom titanium abutment. So why choose custom abutments? Um, that's a question all over dentistry. Uh, for many years, stock abutments have been a popular choice for clinicians. However, custom abutments are quickly becoming more and more the choice for not only clinicians, but also lab technicians. They've even almost become the quote unquote stand, new standard of care as they provide more versatility for, for, and flexibility for passive fit. And more importantly, they provide for prosthetic correction of implant angulation. Um, it would be nice if every implant was placed perfectly, but we all know in this world, that's not always the case. Whether it be clinical technique, um, whether it just be you know, bone level, um, kind of what they're left to deal with in the patient's mouth as far as tissue and bone. So custom abutments really have brought us a long way as far as that goes. Um, with that, they provide greater overall aesthetics, um, more especially in the anterior region. Um, custom abutments obviously provide a much more precise fit, which at the end of the day, save us time and money, provides for fewer chairside visits, fewer returns to the lab for adjustments, um, which equals happy clinician, happy lab technician, and happy patient. And then the, more importantly, what our patients are not even often aware of is they provide for a greater overall support of the implant body itself, and then also the retention of the implant supported crown. So the magic question is always gonna be cost. So the abutment kit comes in at just under $1,000, as you can see. Um, material attachments, it also gives you the cost for those, as well as the cost for each of the titanium dedicated milling tools. Again, these are all available through an authorized Roland DGA dealer or via our online store. We've put together this neat little return on investment or savings calculator um, to kind of give you a broad overview of the low cost of milling custom titanium abutments in-house with this kit versus outsourcing. The estimated cost to mill each custom titanium abutment with this kit is a little over 98 US dollars. We estimate that the average cost of outsourcing a custom titanium abutment is about $175. With that, it gives us a savings at just over $76 per unit. You can see here at the bottom, we put together a, a, a neat little savings way to look at it for over a 12 month period. This was based on milling just two custom titanium abutments a day in house with the kit and the 42W, and that would be five work days. There's no seven work days or any of that in that. We took it anywhere from one day to a week, to a month, to three, six, nine months. And then you'll see we went all the way up to a year. So at the year mark, you can see that first, in comparison to outsourcing, you could save your laboratory or your office a little over $40,000, which essentially would provide for 100% plus ROI on your 42W and the abutment kit itself. So the benefits of the AK-1 saves time and money, the thing that we all want to do. It virtually eliminates the need for outsourcing of custom titanium abutments. It reduces the turnaround time as now you're producing in-house, more especially given recent scenarios where we've seen some major lag time based on closures and other things. This allows you full control to, control to mill in-house. Again, the low cost per unit at an estimated 98 US dollars versus 175 US dollars when outsourced. 
And here's another big one, especially given you know, current times. It helps you to promote your laboratory or your clinical environment as, a, as able to provide full service quality res, implant restorations in-house, um, which adds great value for a faster turnaround time. And it also allows you to have full control over quality and design. Um, so when you're QAing, QAing both, um, QCing, excuse me, both the abutment and the crown, you have control over design, you have control over all of it. And I think that's a great, great advantage when you're doing it all in house. Again, I mentioned potential for 100% ROI on the 42W. And then always we're talking about what the initial investment of things are. Um, it's got a great price point of just under $1,000 as far as an initial investment. Then we're gonna talk about how Millbox works with the kit, because this is gonna be your key factor in nesting it and taking it straight to the mill. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to the expert on this one, who, who is going to be Mike Webb from Sim Systems again. Thanks, thanks, Lisa. Uh, so as Lisa mentioned, we're gonna go through some of the prerequisites and um, I've also got these covered on um, my screen. So let me, let me just go ahead and also share that. Um, Oh, uh, Lisa, I think you need to make me a uh, co-host maybe or a panelist so I can share. But the, uh, let's, let's talk about the first thing. Uh, so the abutment module um, or the AK-1 kit is compatible with Millbox versions 2020 or later. So uh, if you are behind on annual maintenance, you do need the 2020 version of annual maintenance. Uh, if you are not sure what version you have, I'll show you once we get into the software how you can easily check that. Uh, typically, you're only going to have a version prior to 2020 if you bought the machine uh, maybe two or uh, two or more years prior, uh, or let's say that you bought an older wet mill and you maybe upgraded to the new wet mill, but you're still using that old dongle. Um, as Lisa mentioned, the the new wet mill actually includes the dongle. So uh, there's uh, 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 let me break it down on my slide, and I'll show it a little bit um, a little bit more coherent there. In terms of the uh, the module kit, the updates will be available uh, for download on Roland's website, uh, and uh, you're going to want to make sure that as you're going through and installing this software that uh, either you or your IT person disables any uh, security software, uh, including the antiviruses or firewalls, uh, just to allow the software to, uh, to install properly. And then, of course, we do have some suggestions with your dealer that you can get with in terms of uh, any exceptions that may need to be put in place for, role, uh, for uh, the Millbox Cam software. Uh, and of course, lastly, we'll want to make sure that we run those updates as administrator. So that way we have um, uh, the, the program doesn't run into any access issues as we're trying to get that patch uploaded to our computer. So uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. And uh, we're going to, again, go through the Millbox Cam software today. I'm just going to show you guys uh, a couple different slides about what we plan on talking about. Um, again, we did uh, briefly talk about the cam requirements. I've broken it down a little bit easier to read here. Basically, as long as you've got that 2020 update or dongle, you can run this AK-1 kit. And if you are a Millbox, or excuse me, if you are a new user, uh, say you're purchasing a DWX42W, uh, because the new mill does come with the CAM software included, you will actually have out-of-box functionality uh, with the AK-1 kit. So you don't have to purchase any additional modules. This is something that's simply covered as part of your annual maintenance. And generally speaking, that's how we handle um, releasing new features or releasing new kits or new workflows. As long as you stay up to date on your annual maintenance, then that kind of gets you access to those as those uh, new features and new kits come out. So in today's demo, we are gonna be talking about the AK-1 workflow. Uh, a couple of those steps, just to outline those, we're gonna start by uh, selecting a new job. Now, at the new job stage, Essentially what we're doing is we're telling it what kit or what system that we're using. So depending on if I'm using the Medentica, the NT trading platforms or the Geomedi, I'm gonna to need to make an appropriate selection within the CAM software. And we'll see that here in just a moment. Uh, the second step is to import our custom designed abutment. So uh, we're gonna import that either from 3Shape, ExoCAD, Dental Wings, uh, and that's gonna allow us to bring it into the job so that way we can start aligning it with the blank. But before we can do that, we're gonna need to make sure that we select the blank. So uh, 
we'll talk about some automated features and things like that. If you have the automated functionality set up, this step is actually optional. You don't have to, um, you actually don't have to select the blank. Uh, if you don't have automation set up, then uh, you would simply need to go in and select the, the blank that you're gonna be using for this particular case. So you would have an implant uh, catalog guide that you could look up the blank code uh, as it relates to the implant system that you use for your design case. And then you would simply select that blank code here from the list and it would import that into the job. Uh, the CAM software will automatically then align your design with the implant blank. And we'll see that here in the workflow. Uh, the last and final step is when we go to do our calculation, we're gonna make some strategy selections. So this allows us to essentially control how we want this job to come off the mill. And we can affect the, uh, the performance of, uh, of the job in terms of uh, milling time and uh, in terms of quality, surface finish quality. So those two items are directly related when you're milling items. So if you select high quality, it's gonna take a little bit longer to mill, we'll say on average 14 minutes. And then if you uh, select the standard mode, you're gonna get a uh, milling time just under an hour, um, but it's gonna give you a slightly, um, a slightly rougher surface quality. Uh, so, you know, depending on if you want to spend more time cutting on the machine, maybe if you're doing an overnight run or uh, an after hours run, you don't necessarily care if the machine takes a little bit more time. You can certainly, um, you can certainly use the high quality mode and that's going to save you some hand finishing time in the, in the next morning when you come in. Um, and then our uh, final step uh, that we're going to go over is the simulation tool, which is uh, a nice little tool to actually visualize how the cutting process is going to take place on the machine. So it's a, it's a really good kind of uh, check and balance to, to maintain uh, what you have output is actually going to mill out on the, on the machine here. And then if we have time, uh, we're going to talk about the manual blank selection. Uh, we talked about the automated import, and I'll actually show that to you as part of the workflow. But if we do have time, we'll get to that and then down to the questions and answers at the end. So with that being said, let me go ahead and switch over here to Millbox, and we'll get started on the workflow. So as you guys can see, this is the Millbox uh, cam interface. So I'm faced with three uh, separate icons here. Uh, for this case and for today's, uh, we're, we're not gonna talk about all the different icons in Millbox. We're just strictly gonna focus on the AK1 kit and its workflow. So I'm gonna start by selecting my new job. Now, once I've selected my new job, I'm gonna go over here to the right and I'm gonna see the DDoX 42W AK1 kit that's labeled. Now, I'm gonna to wanna to select this particular machine so that way I, I have the uh, titanium material available to me. If I select the other machines, you can see titanium is not listed under those. So once I've selected my machine, I'm also gonna select the pre-milled blank uh, of the type that I've used. So in this particular example today, uh, we're gonna be using the NT trading platform. And uh, for today's example, we'll be importing a, a file that was designed using the NT trading library from Exocad. So once I've selected uh, my uh, initial steps there, I've selected what blank system I'm using, you can see that Millbox is automatically pulled in and loaded uh, the DDoX 42 fix, uh, 42W fixture along with the NT trading uh, adapter, pre-milled blank adapter. So uh, we would of course wanna have that mounted in the machine before we start the run. But right now we're still in the nesting phase. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with the workflow. We can see our second step that we're at now is now we need to import our STL or our designed abutment case. So you can see here, I already have a, um, in my default output folder, I already have a file that's output and ready to go. Uh, let me go up to the automatic case. Here we go. And uh, here we can see there's a preview of the STL. Uh, if I wanna click on it just to kind of get a good idea, uh, make sure that this is indeed the case that I intend to import, I can certainly do that. But for the most part, all I have to do is just um, select the file up here and then hit the check mark to bring that into the job. And you can see that there was a window that popped up there very briefly uh, that had a list of the blanks. You may or may not have noticed it. Uh, don't worry, we'll come back to there in just a second. But uh, basically that was my blank selection. And because I had my implant position XML file from 3Shape, uh, the CAM software was automatically uh, able to recognize that implant and uh, select the appropriate pre-milled blank for that implant and uh, it automatically performed the alignment for me. 
So from a, uh, from a workflow perspective, uh, I am 90% done. Uh, all, the only other thing that I would suggest to do here before I send this off to the mill is just to do a little bit, uh, a, a quick visual uh, examination to make sure that the blank and the STL file themselves line up. Um, generally speaking, if you have a mismatch, then your, the CAM software is gonna notify you of that, uh, which is also a really nice uh, error checking feature. So once I'm to this point, I have two different ways of getting this out to the mill. Uh, if I have the blank already loaded on the machine and the machine door is closed, uh, the Roland supports a really cool streaming functionality, which means that you know even if my calculation takes a few minutes, uh, the machine can start near, uh, near immediately. So uh, as I'm calculating, if I select this option and vPanel is installed on my current computer, the machine will actually start milling as the calculation is commencing in the CAM software. Um, otherwise, I can click on Save Toolpath, which we'll do. And once we do that, uh, the Save Toolpath, the difference there is we're gonna calculate the file and save a PRN file uh, that, will, that can then be uploaded later to the machine via drag and drop. It's a really simple thing. It's just like you're moving a file from, from your desktop to vPanel. So uh, in terms of uh, the strategy options, these are options that pop up as we're getting ready to calculate our file. So uh, depending on the case, uh, its priority and its needs in terms of quality, I can select the surface quality finish that I want for this case. Uh, in this particular example, I'm gonna do standard mode, so that way we don't have to wait, uh, uh, wait as long, although the difference in terms of calculation is, is very small because we're talking about a single unit. Um, and then in terms of the reduced connectors, this is an option uh, by default is selected. Uh, and what that's gonna do is at the end of the cutting process, it's actually gonna come down and right here, um, you can see this green support pin that is at the top of the abutment. This is actually gonna be the post of material that's left behind after the pre-milled blank has been cut away. So um, that uh, additional reduced connector operation is actually gonna come in from the zero side or the top side, and it's gonna come in and cut away half of the connector from here, and then it's gonna come in and cut it from the bottom as well. And what that does is it just facilitates getting, uh, removing the part from the blank after it's been milled. So th this is always done at the end of the process, so that way we still maintain integrity of the support throughout the milling. And then after all the finishing and everything is done, that's when we'll actually come in and actually machine away um, that, little, um, that little nub that's left behind, so. Uh, at this point, we're just waiting for our calculation to finish. So the CAM software is doing its number crunching, uh, and basically it's, it's, uh, it's doing the math that's necessary to tell the machine how it's going to come in and actually cut away uh, the material on that pre-milled blank. So we can see that the calculation is done, and it's even notifying me where it's placed that file. So if I needed to, I could open up Windows Explorer, navigate to this file, and drag and drop it straight into vPanel. Um, alternatively, I can I have a shortcut so I can go to tools and where it says CNC output files because I, I, I chose to save this one and not stream it to the machine. But uh, we can see here if I sort by date modified. This is the file that I just generated one minute ago. Uh, we can see that the name of the job uh, corresponds with the name of the job right here with the 130010 at the end. So that's the file that I'll need to upload to my machine. Uh, and if I have the panel up, I can simply just drag and drop it into the panel. Uh, for those that are not aware or for those that have never used vPanel or heard that term before, vPanel is a uh, CNC controller software that Roland uses to control the machine. It's essentially a communication uh, medium uh, between the computer and the machine. So it's kind of like loading a, a DVD into a DVD drive. Uh, imagine in this case, vPanel is the DVD drive in that example. So uh, it's essentially, its job is to get the file that the CAM software has generated out to the machine and to maintain that communication. And also if there's something that happens along the way, um, then that, that program gives you feedback on the disposition of the machine or the status of that machine. So uh, once we have our PRN file, uh, everything's good to go. You know, the machine could be loaded. I could actually start this on the mill. So pretty easy workflow. Uh, of course, this is the automated uh, functionality, but uh, let me pull up the simulation now and we'll have a quick look at how that, um, how that pans out. So uh, the simulation tool is essentially just a virtual checking utility. And what it does is it looks at the tool paths that uh, Millbox has generated. And it 
it plots those out in a 3D space. So that way you as the end user can kind of see a, almost a virtual representation of what you can come to expect on the mill. And this is, uh, this is very close in terms of tolerance to what's actually gonna happen on the machine. Uh, now there's certain things we can't accommodate, uh, you know, we can't um, uh, always simulate 100% of all the physical factors that occur in the machine, but this will give you a really good idea of what's gonna be going on. So let's kind of take a look at what the process is gonna be and so I had, uh, this is kind of like playing a little video uh, as I'm watching uh, this program. So if I hit the play button, you can see that uh, we're using a three millimeter tool for this particular step. And you can see we're, we're milling the blank in uh, what we call almost like a turnstile milling. Uh, it's very similar to uh, if you guys have seen any videos on YouTube of lathes and how they cut uh, in an industrial setting. Uh, this, is, this is a similar concept, uh, but we're actually doing it with a milling tool. So we're not doing it with a straight edge uh, like you would on an actual lathe. Uh, the benefit of, of milling it this way, uh, it allows us to keep the tool engaged with the blank uh, as much as possible. So there's not a lot of movements where the tool actually needs to rotate up and then go over. Um, it's actually one of the benefits also of having a single clamp mechanism here. Uh, a lot of the uh, pre-milled blank mechanisms you'll see out there with uh, uh, two or three or even six different blanks. Um, well, the flexibility you lose on those is in terms of the way that you can mill it uh, from this perspective. So this allows you to kind of get that, that part out faster. Uh, it allows you to get a little bit better coverage because you're actually able to, to access the part 360 degrees around. You could imagine if we had blanks on either side that we wouldn't be able to get the tool in there and we'd be dealing with like tool clearances. So uh, I, I personally prefer this method because I, I find that uh, you get really, really good results out of it. So what I'm gonna do is just like a video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fast forward through the roughing stages because all we're seeing right now is all the stages that the three millimeter tool is gonna go through. And that's essentially where it's coming in and doing the brunt of all the cutting work and doing the bulk of the material removal. So after the three millimeter, there's actually gonna be a two millimeter tool that comes in and performs what we call a semi-finishing stage. We can actually kind of follow along uh, as this is going throughout the process in the top right hand corner. We can see the order of operations here. Uh, so there's my three millimeter ball and over here is my two millimeter ball. We're gonna do two different semi-finishing stages and then uh, we're actually gonna come in and trim the connector off. Uh, so if I had selected uh, the high quality, we would actually use a smaller diameter tool to come in and do an additional surface finishing um, in, in addition to that two millimeter tool. So you get a little bit greater detail with the higher quality um, and you get that smaller radius. Um, so it can actually fit in and, and actually mill out those, those minute uh, or minuscule uh, details on the part. So um, while we're waiting for the simulation to get caught up, because uh, this, uh, this is a lot of rotations. So when I choose to move the, forward this far in the simulation, uh, you can see this verification is loading. Essentially, it's just doing the math to get caught up because it wants to make sure that it's accurately, it's giving you an accurate depiction of what's gonna happen on the machine. So it has to, it has to do that simulation to a certain tolerance and that tolerance takes a little bit of, uh, of number crunching uh, on the computer side. So uh, just to kind of recap what some of the new features are with the Millbox release, um, we uh, again have talked about automatic pre-milled blank selection and that's what you guys saw after we imported the STL file from the CAD because it's, uh, we had the additional files needed the CAM was able to read those files and automatically select the pre-milled blank, uh, thus eliminating, eliminating that step of the work for, workflow for you as the end user. Uh, also, um, the automatic blank selection is supported by, uh, not by everybody, uh, it is supported by ExoCAD. It also uh, requires, in addition to the STL file, that you have the construction info file. Uh, it is also supported, uh, the automatic blank selection is supported by 3Shape. Uh, and that requires that you have the STL file and the implant position XML file. Now, if you're not sure what files I'm talking about um, or uh, you've never heard of these files mentioned before, that's okay. Just contact your dealer. Uh, this should, these should be 
terms that they're going to be familiar with, especially if it's the, the dealer that sold you the CAD. And they can help you uh, make sure that your output is set up properly. Uh, we also do support output from Dental Wings, which is a, a manual blank selection. So essentially, um, the only difference is, is when you go to import your part, you would then have a subsequent step where you would have to actually browse through and select the correct blank based off of what is specified in your implant catalog. Uh, so just to recap, just contact your dealer if you, have, if you need any assistance in getting your CAD software optimally set up. Um, but uh, this, is gonna, this, is very, this is a very important step because it's going to save you um, the potential mistake of selecting the wrong blank. Um, and it could also um, uh, save you some time throughout your daily workflow as well, uh, since you're not going to have to search for those blanks. Uh, we also automatically check the pre-milled blank against the STL file that you've imported. So what this means is we're actually actively error checking to make sure that you, you made the correct selection uh, when you went to select your blank. So I'll try to see if I can show an example of that. Um, and then of course, just as we saw, uh, we have our kinematic or full simulation of the machine's cutting process, which is nice because it gives us a really good insight into what's gonna happen on the machine. So here we can see that uh, it's gotten caught up uh, actually got caught up uh, while we were talking earlier. And um, it's now gonna go from the two, uh, from the three millimeter down to the two millimeter tool. So you can see it's swapped out to a, uh, a smaller uh, radius. And then again, we're machining following the profile of the abutment here. So uh, it's gonna, again gonna do semi-finishing, but in this case, it's gonna do it in, in a late, uh, turn laid style. And then we're gonna come in and do an additional uh, semi-finishing step that actually follows the full, um, the full face of the abutment. So the first turn milling operation was essentially so that way we could get the proper contours around the, uh, around the shoulder of the abutment. It's very important that we capture that information and we mill those areas out properly. And uh, so that, yeah, that, that worked out really well for us in this example. Uh, and then the very last step, we can see that uh, the tool will actually come in and cut away uh, my support pin to make that, or to facilitate making that a lot easier to get off the machine. So uh, that, is, uh, that is the overview of our workflow on the CAM side. Uh, Lisa, I think we have a little bit of time. We could probably go and show that uh, the manual workflow as well. Is that okay? Absolutely. I think that would be great, especially for our dental wings users. Great, great. And let me go ahead and do that here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with a new job. And we're going to go in here to the AK1. And again, select, uh, we're going to still stick with the NT trading. I have another file that is manual. It, does, it essentially does not have the additional CAD files. So this is an example of what you would what would what you would see if you had to import it manually. So I'm going to import uh, this uh, file here, and uh, I actually have my STL file already pre pre named, so I know exactly what blank I need to pick out. Yours is probably going to be your patient's name or your order or something along those lines. What I do suggest in that in that case is just to check your order form and make sure. Uh, check that against your product catalog from the implant and make sure that you're selecting the correct uh, code here. So you can see SNT 4.550. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check mark and then that's now going to be imported along there for me. Okay, so that is, that is the only difference in terms of the workflow from the automated to the manual steps. And um, uh, essentially at, at this point, if I did need to make adjustments, now we're not gonna go into this today, uh, but you can make adjustments both on a rotational perspective and on uh, the height alignment of your part with the blank. So just keep that in mind as well. And then uh, again, I'm just gonna go to save toolpath and we'll actually calculate this one through. Uh, but uh, aside from that, that's pretty much our, our steps for the workflow, guys. Uh, I think at this point, we can probably move on to some Q&A, Lisa. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mike, for all of the great information. Um, there's a few questions that already popped up. Um, we can go ahead and start addressing those. Um, the first one we got it was, does this abutment work in the DWX4W? It unfortunately does not. This accessory is exclusive for the DWX42W. Um, next question was, do you plan on having DES implant ad attachments? 
Um, as far as expanding our database or our compatibilities, uh, we are always actively working. As an open system, we are always actively working to expand our database and our compatibilities as far as CAD software. So we hope that it will have greater capabilities in the future and compatibilities. And I would say the same for major implant manufacturers as far as Primo blanks. When that will be, I do not know, um, but it is something that we are actively working on. And then it looks hey, like- Hey, Lisa. Yes. Uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt. I did want to let you know, um, so I am working from home today, but we just lost power. I'm on battery backup. So I think I probably have another 15, 20 minutes, but um, I'll let you guys know if we start to get <laughs> closer to that uh, red line. So. No worries. And Mike, it looks like in the q and a, a, a few of these are for you potentially. Yes. Are you able to sure. see that q and a? Yes, yes. Um, so let's see, X asks, uh, so we're asking what RPM at X axis mills. I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Um, I don't think we'll be providing those kinds of details during this meeting, but uh, if you do have those details and your dealer, uh, you know, I would, I would field those to your dealer and they can definitely uh, get back with you on that, Gonzalo. Um, and then uh, let's see, Nick, uh, Nick was asking, will the A-axis rotate like a lathe when the tool is coming from the Z? Um, yeah, so I mean, essentially as we're, as we're machining, okay, it looks like you, he asked that question and then saw it answered as we were going through the workflow. So yes, the answer is yes, it will rotate like a lathe when we're, uh, when we're roughing out. Uh, Sean uh, was asking about FDA compliance needed for uh, customer tie bases. Lisa, would you like to address that? Absolutely. I'm always more than happy to answer those kind of questions. Uh, so the mach all of our DWX machines themselves are FDA compliant. The pre mill titanium blanks as well are FDA compliant. If a user is looking for FDA compliance as far as workflow, they're going to want to consult with their CAD CAM software provider. Um, and then if they're looking to take it a step further than that, they're going to want to consult with an FDA compliance consultant. Great. Great answer there. Thank you. And thank you, uh, thank you for the question, Sean. Uh, Richard, is, is there going to be an easier... Is it going to be an easier way to mill an implant abutment without a screw hole? Without a screw hole. Uh, are you referring to, I, I think you're referring to blanks that don't have the screw hole and then we can mill the hole after the fact. Um, in terms of workflow, Millbox has the capability to do that, but that's not going to be a supported workflow out of the box. Um, and I, I can't speak on whether or not that's going to be supported in the future, um, but it's definitely something uh, I would imagine that uh, is going to be more popular because we are seeing that uh, pop up in the market. And we have some customers, uh, us in terms of Millbox, that are doing that uh, in other applications, mostly on the dry mills um, or, or in some cases the wet mills as well. But uh, for this kit, uh, it's not going to support that out of the box. And uh, James, how do you feel the machine will hold up if an abutment milling is, primary, is the primary job for the machine? Uh, Lisa, uh, I think you'd probably be a better answer for that, uh, one to answer that. Absolutely, more than happy to answer that. Um, with the special um, tray, uh, the special purpose tray that's, tray that's actually designed to collect the titanium remnants, um, there's, no fact, there's no effect on the filters or the pump or any of that because none of that is getting into that area. You're talking about spindleware, um, R&D in Japan milled just over 500 units, and they showed no significant wear on the spindle as opposed to milling ceramics. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, and uh, is it available in Canada, Fred asks. Uh, yes, it is available in Canada. Uh, Lisa, do you wanna to speak to the markets? Uh, yeah, it is actually currently available um, in the U.S. market, in the Canadian markets, and also in the Latin American regions, um, which is all covered by Roland DGA or DG Shape Americas. Great. And um, I think uh, uh, Young was asking, how many abutments potentially can be milled per day? Um, did you cover that by chance on your ROI? We did not. So our okay. ROI for savings or ROI or savings calculator just estimated if you milled two custom titanium a day, kind of what your savings would be. If you're looking at how many titanium abutments um, you'd be able to mill a day on the 42W, if you're using it exclusively for the 42W, um, the average 
milling time is roughly about 60 minutes. Um, Mike, I was going to ask the standard mode versus high quality. Do you know what the what the difference in milling time between those two was? It's a, it's on average about a 14 minute difference. So uh, you're not adding a whole lot of extra milling time on because and it's always going to be uh, dependent upon the size of the abutment. So the the wider it is, the more surface area we have to cover. Uh, or if you're milling out a larger size blank, a larger diameter implant. Uh, of course, that's more material that we have to rough away. So those can play factors in there. But in general, uh, speaking about a 14 minute on average difference between those two. Awesome. So I think um, to answer that question, it's going to depend on how many how many um, hours a day you're working. So as an average, if you are working an eight hour, you know, typical workday and you had your machine, machine, machine simulated and you know everything was ready to go, you could potentially mill eight per day. Um, maybe one overnight, so even more than that. So it's just gonna be dependent on what your actual workflow is, um, how many hours a day you're working, um, and then how you have that set up you know, to be automated within your system. Gotcha. And uh, just, uh, I just, I'm just sharing here on my screen. Uh, this is a screenshot or this is an actual photo of uh, the high quality surface finish uh, coming off the machine. And then this would be uh, the, the standard surface quality finish. So there's, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of, uh, of difference between the two, but you can see that the, st the standard um, uh, does not have the additional finishing where it's going to come in and do like a turnstile finishing all over the entire part. You can see it just has that semi finishing where it goes um, up and down along the, uh, along the uh, sidewall of the part. Let's just see what other questions we have coming in here. Um, I'm not sure for Min Kim on the question, are they the same price on TI blank? I think your question is, is it the same price for each manufacturer? Um, if that's the case, um, that's going to be a consumable that's going to be sold through a Medentica NT Trading or Geomedi um, authorized reseller. Um, on average, they're about the same cost. Um, more or less the reason to choose one manufacturer for pre titanium blanks over another is going to be on is going to be based on the actual implant body system that you're using and the compatibilities that you're looking for there. Um, the list I showed as far as implant body capabilities, um, excuse me, compatibilities that is also available on the Roland DGA website. So that's something you'll always be able to reference and it'll also be in the user's guide. Um, and then what is the lifespan of tools in terms of hours? Um, it's going to be based on how many abutments you're milling. Um, that savings calculator um, that we presented um, is, is basically based on how much of each tool is used for how many minutes. If you're milling in standard mode versus high quality mode, that's gonna be a factor. Um, so that's gonna be very specific to what you're actually milling. And then um, if you're looking for overall, as far as specs on that, um, they've indicated um, that the three millimeter would be, excuse me, that the three millimeter would be about 15 hours. Um, then the next one um, would be at three hours and then after that eight hours. So that's just giving you the general specifications. And again, that's all gonna be in your product guide. And then someone's asking, James, you're asking about Bicon implant custom abutment. So that's gonna go back to manufacturer specifics and what the compatibilities are. So you'd need to um, reference the list as far as um, the pre-milled the pre-milled blank manufacturers, and they would be the one to tell you about the actual implant capabilities as far as that goes. And then let's see if we have any other questions here. We'll give you just a few minutes. How you doing on power, Mike? I think we're good for now. Um, I'm, at, I'm at about a quarter of my capacity. Uh oh. Started beeping 20 minutes ago, so I think I think we're okay though. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So we'll give it just a few more minutes. Um, can you think of anything else, Mike, that people might have as far as a question?
Not so much. Uh, there, uh, there are some uh, items. I guess since we have this additional time, would you like to show some of these uh, manual adjustments? They're two buttons, pretty, pretty simple. Uh, we've actually got a few more questions coming up. Okay. Perfect. Um, but if we have time, absolutely. Uh, let's see, there's a question here. It says the cool and insulating liquids used are the same for milling ceramics. That is absolutely correct. So the only thing that's going to change um, when milling titanium is going to be number one, the titanium dedicated tools. And then number two is going to be that special filter tray that goes on the top. So essentially, you're just going to remove the existing top tray on the 42W and you're going to replace it with this. And again, the special filter there is just exclusively for collecting um, titanium remnants. And then Mike, if you want to, uh, let's see. We'll just give them a couple more minutes for questions. Sure, no problem. Make sure you still got power. Okay, it is beeping on me now. <laughs> we can do is um, we'll give it a couple more minutes. I'll stay online for any questions. Um, you know, I can hop in from my mobile and make sure that I can answer any there actually. Perfect. Uh, another question here, we have two 42Ws. Should you use it separately? Um, meaning mill on each machine or I assume your question is should you mill titanium on one and ceramics on the other? Um, that's gonna be entirely up to you. It's not necessary. Um, the idea of this is it's a very simple switchover process. So again, it's just the removal thing that needs to be changed between the two um, is going to be that filter tray on the top to collect the, because it's specifically designed to collect those titanium remnants and your milling tools and your material adapter. Other than that, it's not like you're doing a whole changeover on the machine. So it's a super quick, you can mill it on both, you can mill it on, on one, it's entirely up to you. Give it just a couple more minutes here for questions. If nobody has any questions, you are always more than welcome um, to contact us for questions or your dealers are gonna have all this great information and resources for you. So please don't hesitate to use them as a resource as well. Um, again, there's lots of information on the Roland website um, at rolanddga.com forward slash dental. It doesn't look like we have any more questions in, so we'll go ahead and end it for today. Um, thank you all for joining us. And again, um, we're excited to see you all use the new AK1 abutment kit product. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you.